So, hello everyone and welcome to our virtual testing forum and today's session about PPE and medical textile testing for the COVID-19 pandemic. So this is the last out of seven webinars that we showed since October 5th about medical and pharmaceutical testing solutions. My name is Jochen Niederberger, I'm medical and pharmaceutical industry manager at Swick World in Ulm. So COVID-19 um, had an impact and still has a huge impact on our daily lives and also on the demand of personal protective equipment and other medical textiles. Quality control and also approval testing is essential to ensure a high product quality. Within this webinar you will learn about six world ready-made testing solutions for these kind of products. So before we start, I would like to show you uh, the agenda for today's webinar. First of all, a short introduction into the GoToWebinar functions and the most relevant one. Then uh, some information, brief overview about SwickRoll and today's speakers, followed by the presentation. And we will end with a Q&A session. And for your information, we expect about 40 to 50 minutes for that webinar. So here you can see the, the GoToWebinar panel on, on the slide. Uh, we have that red arrow icon. You can minimize, you can maximize it. And also we want to inform you that we won't use the function of raising hands and we muted all the attendees' microphones. But for sure you, you're able to participate at any time by entering questions into this question uh, box uh, in the panel. And we will also use polls during that webinar to tailor um, that to you and uh, the presentation to you and also get some information uh, about your expectations about your testing and so how does this look like so first of all i will launch a first poll you can see it here on the screen and uh, now you can go into that it's a single choice click on that and submit the vote and then let's wait for for another five to ten seconds okay i think that's great thank you so later on this will be more relevant topics about testing of pp so here we can see it's about uh, we see now the the displayed results that you get an impression later on and this will also be visible for you for the other questions very good let's hide the boat and go back to to the presentation Okay, so now for, for the next uh, presentations, I will turn, on, uh, turn off my webcam and turn it on back again for the Q&A session. So Swift Row, just some, some short, brief information. Um, we're the world's leading supplier of materials testing machines, and we are a medium-sized family business uh, headquartered in Ulm in Germany in the southern part, and we have about 1,600 employees worldwide. And for more than 160 years, we sell materials testing machines um, into the R&D and also into the quality assurance in more than 20 industries. And the medical and pharmaceutical industry is one of them. And we are active in that industry so for more about 15 years now. During that time, we have uh, implemented uh, interesting and intelligent testing systems for your uh, standardized but also for customized uh, requirements. We have uh, set up a testing software and also services that help you to become compliant to, to all kind of industry regulations. And our global sales and service organizations in more than 50 countries worldwide are, are there for you to consult you, are there for you to support you whenever you need us. Now let's come to today's speakers. Um, I will be supported by my colleague Eric Burnt who you should now see on, on the screen with a webcam. He is also medical and pharmaceutical industry manager with a long-lasting experience, also a member of several Dean and ISO standard committees. Yeah, thank you, Jochen, and also a warm welcome. Um, let me also use the camera. So today we are at uh, topic medic PPE and medical textiles. Um, for sure, the, the topic um, is quite large. I think there's a lot of products in the area of medical textiles and then especially for, for PPE. And um, 
we had a little bit uh, to take a look um, what we want to present. And I think in a moment, the uh, COVID-19 topic, we have some very urgent topics everyone knows and some products um, which are um, were urgently um, searched at the beginning and now produced in uh, bigger masses. And perhaps we are looking here um, um, at protective mask. I think now everybody is aware um, of this topic. Um, we will have a topic on face shields also. I think it's um, we are quite aware in the moment if we are out seeing these. And then um, protective clothing. This is the topic for in the moment hospitals, for all the staff. And there's also a um, large um, requirements on this. And at the end, we will have a look on the, the medical gloves. And also, this is an, a very hot topic. Um, in the moment. But for sure, as I said, this um, area is much more wider. So in medical textiles, we can imagine there are bandages, we are, um, there are sutures, we have different dressings inside, it could be adult diapers and so on and so on. And for sure, there will be also um, different test methods. Um, but Perhaps if we have a look now on standards, and this is what is our focus for today, for sure for the other products, um, there will be um, some of these standards which are also applicable because they are, have a wide range. This is, um, um, for example, if we are looking on the protective mask, the ASTM D5034 uh, and 35, um, they are widely used for uh, a lot of different products. So we see there's a wide range on ISO standards, ASTM standards. There's also KDIM is a um, German uh, versions of this. So this area is highly standardized. Uh, this means um, it's, it's, it's clearly described how to test it um, and what you have to fulfill. What is also clear, we are talking perhaps on medical textiles. Uh, a lot of these standards are also relying on textile testing. This is often very nearby, perhaps on the medical, there are some special um, um, testings on top of, um, but they are used. Quite important for you, um, these, most of these standards from ISO, ASTM, um, you can in the moment freely download from their sites. This is a special topic of COVID-19. So this means ISO and ASTM, um, they opened up their standards. So this is now free of charge. And if you're looking, searching for ISO, for ASTM COVID-19 uh, standards, um, then you will directly find these directories. And there is a lot of relevant standards inside. Perhaps use this time, you can download them free of charge. And I think this is a good help because some standards are quite extensive. Okay. Yeah, Eric, uh, first of all, thank you for that short overview. I think that's an important hint with the free, freely available uh, standards. And uh, before we move on, I'm, I'm really curious to learn which type of uh, PPE is of most interest for, for you, for our listeners, and uh, therefore start our, our second poll. I just launched it so that here you can have multiple choice and uh, submit uh, your interested areas or products. So let's wait for some more seconds. There are still some people that, that should vote. Okay, very good. Great, so let's show the results. We see 65% uh, uh, in protective mask and then followed by medical gloves and then uh, the others, more or less with the same percentage. Great, I think that that is uh, of a uh, big help for us for, for the later presentation. I would like to, to move on now with, with face mask actually and uh, the point is, which kind of tests can be done for face masks? And there's quite a, first of all, there's quite a huge range of, of face masks available. So one are for the personal protective, for protecting you against uh, 
infects from outside, so it's personal protective equipment. Therefore, often they are used with a filter. And, uh, and on the other hand, we have the surgical mask we have to wear right now, which are medical products because we should or they protect the environment of not being harmed to the patient in the very end. And so here for, for the testing, we see different uh, possibilities. We start already by the raw material, by the granulate, that we can define the the flow characteristics for the production of the non-woven textiles. Then the second point is we do tensile testing, tear growth testing, or related ten, uh, textile testing for the non-wovens, for, for the uh, semi-products. And then in the very end, we can also go for testing of the end product for the mask itself or for its components. And on the next slide, I would now like to go deeper into these uh, different uh, testing areas, let's say. Here we focus on, on the melt flow characteristics. In the picture, you can see our melt flow uh, extrusion vestimeter type M flow, which consists of several components. We have uh, the pneumatic weight lifting unit, we have the weights on it, we have a precise piston transducer that is responsible for, for measuring the time and also for, for the travel. And which you can see here, we have the, the display. Uh, so it can be used as a standalone uh, version, or it can also be used with our test expert software, test expert tree with a connection to a PC. So it's quite flexible and fulfills all the, the standards that are visible here. But what has this to do with face mask testing? Um, and this is uh, extremely important. As I mentioned, we qualify the material that is used for the production of PPE. It's polypropylene, uh, which can be, be, let's say, used for, for producing the face mask in two ways, in spun bone, with a spun bone method or melt blown method. And uh, there we have different uh, melt indexes. For the spun bound, uh, bound, it's lower, and for the melt blown, it's three times higher. And our end flow can do both materials, and I think that is of big help. And this is extremely important because at the beginning, in the production, when you do testing, you want to have a quick response whether the granulate that you put into the production process meets the requirements you defined. And therefore, it is of big help. Another important point is if the melt index uh, is not correct, uh, then this could lead to, to uh, an improper production and later on to face masks that do not uh, protect in the way that you, you defined or want to have it. And uh, I think that is just a, a short overview of these raw materials testing. Thank you, Jochen. Yeah, the next is now, like Jochen said, um, um, perhaps other mechanic, mechanical testing. So we are perhaps looking now on the different tensile testings. And perhaps um, now we will wonder um, if my picture is tilted. No, um, this is really, we have a single current testing machine, which can be tilted to the horizontal or to a vertical position. So this means we are here on the horizontal. We can over this axis turn it to the left. There are um, handles on it and it can be lifted up. Um, so this means we can test in the vertical position and in the horizontal. We will see later on reason for it. Um, and also um, this machine can be tilted in the axis. This means we can test to the side and we can test on, on top of. And this is also perhaps um, um, uh, for different applications necessary. So this is a um, very um, universal um, solution. Um, here, perhaps on the right side, perhaps we see a little bit detail. So we are using here um, pneumatic um, grips. Um, and with this, easily we can test um, the, the stripes. The machine itself for sure has a, a controller named for um, Tegrol Test Control 2 and um, our test software, which is the Test Expert 3. So, what to do? Why we are testing on horizontal? Because we want to test um, non woven textiles, especially perhaps here, like Jochen said, the, the spun bound. Um, um, non-woven, which is the internal part um, of the mask. And these tests um, has to be done in dry and in wet 
And you can imagine if we have a vertical um, tricky testing machine, um, um, a single column machine, we have a wet, then all the, the wetted material, the water is perhaps dripping on grips and others. And therefore it's a good position to have it horizontal. Um, we can um, wet it. And I will start perhaps, um, we have again, um, um, the plummetic grips, they have a foot steering, so this means he can hold it with both hands, whereas the uh, feet he is um, um, activating the pneumatic grip system. He can close it and you can see perhaps he is taking the sample out of the, um, the container with water, so um, the ready uh, wetted sample is entered. And then we are doing the tensile test, water can drip down in the collector pan and um, we are measuring now the, the force and elongation. You can see here, there is, we have seen um, 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 a strong necking of this material. You can see here this necking, um, which is tilted in, and it's going up to maximum force and uh, the brake. Um, for your information, we are using for um, for the grips, for the jaw faces, um, for such materials, we are using jaw faces which have an, um, um, a flat surface which is covered by an, uh, I will name it artificial rubber, it's named Vulcolane, and this offers us the best gripping behavior uh, for this. This was the, the wet situation and now we can use it on the, the same test app for the dry for sure you can tilt it perhaps up um, if you're looking on the left side um, there we're seeing also the mechanical um, activators for turning the single column the traverse uh, what i said by uh, 90 degrees up and down this is possible now let's take a look so Um, here we have now the, the wet sample, so he's getting this out of the, the water, he's clamping it to the pneumatic grips, also close by the, the food controller, and we are doing the same tensile test and is doing, um, have the same behavior. I think this is um, the easiest setup for doing tensile testings. We are seeing here for these non woven on top um, the ISO 9073 um, 3 or um, ASTM D5035. Um, this is the test where we have um, a smaller. Um, testing size than the grips. We have also the 5034 where we have uh, smaller um, grips than the width of the sample. This is so named uh, grab testing and perhaps um, these are different setups. Second test which is very relevant um, for such materials following also the ISO um, standard um, we are doing here the, the testing on the bulb burst strength. So we have a special tooling where we can have these stripes um, which are cut out um, of these um, spun bond non-woven. And starting the machine here on the 90 minute, we have these defined um, ball die which is now penetrating. There will be also normally we will in sound if it's um, if it's breaks. We are getting the maximum force out of this. Um, and with this, we can now move. We can do multiple tests on one sample if we are moving um, the stripe a little bit to the next position. Here we are seeing perhaps results. We have done this with different materials, and we can see then for sure there will be also different results. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, let, let me go on. So uh, I'm quickly summarize what we have seen. We have seen the test on raw material. We have seen the test on non-moving uh, textiles. And now 
we can move on to, to the surgical mask or to the mask itself. This test can be done with, with it, uh, this machine, which you can see here. It's also a single color machine. Uh, our Zwicky line, uh, with, which is equipped with Test Control 2 and also our Test Expert 3 software. And this has some, some specialty. So, especially if you have different sample that require a different configuration, like specimen cribs, jaw inserts, and so on, you can also have two test areas on the machine. So you can see on the lower part, we have uh, pneumatic ribs in, inserted with, with the load cell. And on the upper part, you have the second testing area uh, with, with manual screw grips. So it, you're quite flexible in here. And uh, that means for sure also, you do not have to convert the machine every time when you go from one test to another. That saves time and also reduces failure and uh, later on. An important point that I would like to mention is that it's also possible to define these testing areas in our system configuration builder of test expert free. That means we can decide we have to do a tensile test with the pneumatic grip in the testing area one, and we can assign this testing area to the test program so that there's also another safety aspect and also uh, later on ensures reliable testing results. When we now move on and look at the mask, we can see that there are several components that require testing. So first of all, we can uh, test the mask body. So we can cut pieces out of the mask, which you can see here, the free ones, um, which are cut out there, and we can do a tensile test on that mask body. Another test which is uh, suitable is the testing connection of the mask band and the mask body. So also some kind of uh, tensile testing. And now I would like to go deeper and show you how such a test could look like. And here we, th we can see um, the machine. We have uh, also pneumatic grips, not with a food controlled unit. We have it with a, with a tipping valve where you can open and close very easily the, the pneumatic grips. Uh, Compared to the solution to the horizontal one, we have now also the specialty, we have different kind of joint sets. We have on the one side a joint set with a smooth uh, surface made out of vulculane, uh, this artificial rubber. And on the other side, we have uh, a joint set made of aluminium um, with a convex side. So to, to come from a surface pressure to a line pressure to increase really the, the pressure on the specimen to avoid slipping. So now let's start the test. Um, you can see we, we insert this specimen. It's uh, 50 mill with a width of 50 millimeter as it is defined in this ASTM D535. We can close the specimen grips with the tipping valve. Then we start the test. We can see here we want to determine the breaking force and elongation. We have the force and elongation uh, curve that is recorded. We see the, the, the Traverse is moving upwards, uh, downwards, sorry, is the upper uh, testing area until it, it breaks. And then we also detect that break in our software and then the test uh, stops automatically. And then for sure you can compare different uh, material, different mask um, uh, materials or different uh, types from each other. This was the first test I would like to show. And the second test is, is done now, this uh, connection between the mask band and the mask body. And here we have a cyclic test. Um, that means cyclic, it's not standardized, but you can imagine if you have to put on a mask several times, very often you use it multiple times, then the, we have a lot of uh, loads on that mask band that has to withstand these loads for sure. And, uh, so this is a, a test that is very often done at our customer side. Um, another test we, we have here is again the connection of the mask band to the mask body, which follows ASTM D535. So it's just a, a standard test to determine the, the maximum force. So we just uh, pull as, as strong as possible until the, we lose the connection. And it's always that point from the mask body where this mask band gives out. So this is the weakest point. And I think very often we have recognized that this happens. So it's important to know about that as well. 
So we have now talked a lot about face masks during the last minutes and uh, another important area of you is medical gloves and this is what we what I would like to hand over now to Eric. Thanks Jochen. Okay, glove testing. As I said, um, important topic and we had also in our voting over 50% of you today um, you're doing already tests and interested and okay. Um, we are seeing on the left side the, the glove and for testing we have to take um, samples out of these. These samples they have um, a geometry like a dog bone or it's named dumbbell, different versions and we have um, to use um, uh, cutting knives and with these cutting knives we have to take samples out of the, the glove and the standard describes we have to take the same samples out of the fingers, we have to take it out of the palm area and at the beginning the opening um, of the glove itself. Um, it's a little bit tricky because you know we have uh, a lot of different sizes for gloves um, this means also for a very small size glove we have to cut it out. This is often um, not that easy one and um, perhaps there are different versions of, of um, standards and testing and depending from the standard um, we need different cutting knives with different geometries. For example we will talk now on a standard EN uh, 455. For this we need at the end uh, a total length of 100 millimeter and the, the, the width in the middle of the sample will be 3. There's an ISO standard uh, 37. Here we have a total length of 75 and 4 millimeters uh, and so on. They are a little bit different and this makes also a difference than perhaps how to test it. On the right side we see then that we have to use these um, dumbbell samples and um, to grip with the machine. Here again uh, we are using the same plummetic system like Jochen described it with the switch. Um, we have um, 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 flat jaw faces um, with vulculan topping and with this we can grip it. Let's see how these tests and the first is now um, this EN455. This is widely used. Important of these tests um, we are only looking for the maximum force. Um, I will explain later on. So we have will not measure the elongation of the sample itself. So this is the very basic test and perhaps not that accurate. So we have to slip in the ends of the dog bone so in the standard uh, it's described um, how to grip it, how to, to enter it and then starting the machine and for sure this is now um, a much more larger elongation than on the textiles we have seen before. So it's going on um, a strain. The strain is taking only from the traverse and we are still pulling and then we have the waking at the end. So with this um, we are getting the maximum force out of this. But we have one problem and this is not comes not only from perhaps the, the glove testing, it's a topic of the special geometry of these dog bones or dumbbells. Um, if we are doing on these samples tensile testing, then we have different um, elongations in the different areas. You can imagine that a wider area will have a different elongation than these very um, small strip in the, in, in the middle and at the end. So this means in this EN455 we have perhaps like only an average elongation. If we are now going to a more accurate test and this is the ISO 37, there is also ASTM D412, 
This comes out of the plastics industry and here we are looking on high occurrence. And for this it's quite important that we are only measuring pores for sure, but the elongation in the middle of the sample. This is named the testing length um, and how to do it. Um, there are normally extensometers um, available. This means um, perhaps like clip-ons. So we are contacting the sample and while testing this extensometer is measuring the deformation um, in this area. The topic is with some clip-on or contacting extensometer, we have a problem here. This is a very thin sample um, and we will perhaps damage this sample and perhaps we are adding forces on this which will get us not a reliable testing result. And this means if we want to test following ISO 37, we have to use a so-named non-contacting extensometer. Here, for example, on the left side, you see our single testing uh, column machine, like we have seen it before, the tricky line. And on the left side, we have our video extensometer, video extends it's named. And with this, we can measure elongation on the sample. And here we can see we have in the sample in the middle on the, the blue dumbbell, we glued two markers on it. And the, the video extends will follow while doing the test these markers and measure the elongation only in this test setup. And this you can see on the right side now. So we have the, the glove sample in it. On the left side is the video extends. And let's see how this test looked like. So we are doing this now, testing tensile strengths and the ultimate elongation at this dog bone. Um, so it's again pulling up. On the left side, you have to imagine is the, the video extends and this is now looking on the two markers. It's following the markers and can measure the distance between these both markers. And this will be then the real measure for value for elongation at the end. Okay, and this is then going up to break. This means there are different methods uh, to measure glass um, based on standards. Um, perhaps for very basic testing, perhaps the measurement without extensometer could be a right version if you want to be more accurate and following perhaps these ISO or ASTM, we need the video extensometer. And like I said, taking samples is also quite um, 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 difficult. Um, we are offering, for example, also um, such um, 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 knife systems and um, uh, machines for cutting these out. Okay, Eric, I think that's that's great uh, to also have the difference of with and without an extensometer. And I think that is a very good question to ask you uh, how you currently do the testing. And therefore, I will launch our last poll for today. As you can see, uh, if you do currently test on medical gloves, how do you do them without the use of an extensometer, with an extensometer? Um, or do you want to go into that testing? Or are you just interested to learn about that? Okay, so wait another five to ten seconds. There are still some, some votes to go. Okay, so let's share the results. So this is pretty interesting. Um, uh, some of them, so a small part is using it with an extensometer and the most are just here to learn it. And I think that's that's pretty fair. And I think this is something you have to take home to understand how you want to do the testing in future. Uh, you, we have discussed the advantages uh, from the one solution to the other solution, also the, the standards that apply for, for these types. And, and so uh, we hope that you could give you some, some more insight, some more detailed information on that. Now I would like to move on to, to another topic, because when we sat together and defining the content for this webinar, uh, we know that medical gloves and also masks are at the moment the hot topics. 
But uh, Eric also mentioned there are other products in medical textiles like uh, sutures, plaster, wound treatments, webs, gauze bandages that are uh, where testing is required. And we also want to to show that we we offer testing solutions for them as well. And uh, we do that for many years now. And I just brought uh, three examples out of our portfolio uh, with me to to show to you. So on the left upper picture, you can see a tensile test on gauze bandages. This is the already known ASM D535 from the from the masks or from the non-woven textiles. So it also applies to gauze bandages. That is why I do not want to go more into detail with that. Uh, on the upper uh, lower left picture, we can see a very interesting application uh, for gauze bandages is the testing of the unrolling behavior. So what does it mean? So um, very often it happens that individual fibers um, are catching on the roll and prevent reliable unrolling. And this is not is seen very critical for the for the care personnel. They they do not like it for sure. Uh, and and this could also lead to that that the product is rejected and they go for an alternative product. And that is why the manufacturers want to understand this unrolling behavior and they want to measure the force to unwind the bandage from a roll. And here in this example, we have a 10 kilonewton stand uh, to color mod model with an unrolling uh, unit, with an unrolling fixture, which is motor driven. And uh, then we just, let's say, unroll the gauze bandage. And this can also be used for, for um, pull off tests on plaster or band aid strips as well. So it's quite flexible. Here on the right side, we see also an, an interesting application about the adhesive force of wound dressings. Uh, so the left picture shows how the standard, the EN1939, describes it, how it should work. So we put it on a metal blade and then we pull it off from that metal blade and uh, it can be done in various angles. So you can really define the angle. and. Uh, However, the problem is the forces we measure from the metal blade are about 20 times higher uh, if you compare it to the skin. And so if we would, would uh, apply the same forces, we would really peel off the skin. And that is why manufacturers go, what we see on the right picture, also to, to do tests on, on natural skin. And this due to several reasons. So first of all, they want to detect if there's any sensation uh, of pain by the patient. And the second point is they also want to understand if there's any skin irritation that could happen due to, to the adhesive component that is used. And this is extremely important as well. Yeah, thanks, Jochen. I have now um, prepared another movies from the testing. Uh, Jochen named already testing of gauze bandage. For sure, this could be also for different other types. Um, Gauze bandage, um, we have seen this uh, with the unrolling behavior. It uh, has a quite high elongation um, and uh, also the maximum force is quite high. So this is, means we are not that interested to look for what is the maximum force because you will never use this um, by winding to make a maximum force. I think this will have um, 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 problems for the patient then, but we are interested and we see it here perhaps um, what is the elastic behavior. And for doing elastic behavior, um, cyclic testing um, will help a lot because we would see what is the setting, relaxation, the elongation uh, and perhaps we are using here then two force limits. This is where we go between one newton uh, to ten newton and um, we can do this cyclic loading. Um, Jochen named here also we have draw faces. We are using here also um, a line clamping. This means one side we have a flat draw face, Vulcolan against the convex aluminium on the other side. And with this, we are getting the highest um, 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 gripping um, force to the sample compared if we have this on the flat to flat. And my last video, um, um, looking on a swap. Okay, this is uh, perhaps some 
uh, a special compress with an um, aluminium, uh, it's aluminium cupboard, so a very specific one. I think it was out of a customer test. And here again, clamping now by um, two flat draw faces with Vulcula on its grip. And here again, the tensor test, we are seeing a heavy necking effect. Then we see the different breaking of the covering aluminium and uh, the inside and this we will see also in our um, force diagrams this. I think we have now getting good um, insight to these testings to our focus products which we have taken out today. What you have seen we are using nearly the same machine setup we are using same grips. So for all the medical textiles or textiles, um, it's perhaps easier than we have shown in our last webinars where we need um, for uh, product test, uh, testing very complex uh, grips and draw faces. And here we are talking mostly a flat textile which has to be gripped perhaps with different draw faces depending on the surfaces. We have seen perhaps how to test in the wet and the dry and with different set test setups. And like Jochen said, we can very easily use uh, this universal testing machine with different test setups for all tests which are necessary in a lab to testing textiles. And at the end, the topic of software. Yeah, I think this is extremely important. So we always uh, refer to software to do the force enumgation curves. And I also want to, let's say, highlight four features uh, out of the software that help you to, to guide you through the software, that protect the test data and also the test configuration. And I would like to start with the left upper picture about the st 600 standard test programs. So we see the medical textiles world is very standardized. Uh, it comes all from the textile standards and uh, we have we know that and we have defined a lot of standard test programs. So what does it mean? We reconfigured everything from which test uh, speed is required, which test result is required, how must the protocol look like? So there's no need for you to go in each standard and, and find out the results, find out the speeds, which is quite, uh, uh, depending on the standard, can be a very challenging topic. So this is something we do for you. We, we are already done. You can just take the standard test program, load it, uh, put the specimen in and start the test. The second point I mentioned it once for these two testing areas is our intelligent system configuration builder. This on the one hand helps you, first of all, to protect uh, the sensors for not being damaged. Um, on the other hand, it also helps you to, as I mentioned, define test programs and link them, save them to a system configuration. And it also has the possibility that the test only can start if the right system configuration, if the right sensors are in the machine. And uh, this also helps you to, to protect uh, your data to ensure reliable test results. Another important topic, because we're in the world of uh, medical and pharmaceutical of heavily, uh, heavily regulated industry. So it's uh, the user management, which is quite a must. And we have a uh, integrated user management in our test expert free software, which is freely configurable. You can define users, assign them to different user groups. We have a comprehensive rights administration. So that means password guidelines. We can also go for LDAP, um, so that we can use your Windows passwords so that there's no need to have two user administrations. And another important topic is our expanded traceability option. And this is extremely important if you want to go for the 21st CFR Part 11 or the EU GMP Annex 11. Uh, that means if you want to go for electronic records and electronic signatures instead of paper-based documentation. And there we have an option. Um, you can purchase and then it is really documented when something was done, by whom it was done, what was done, why something was done and finally who is responsible. And this together helps you to become compliant with your, let's say, processes you, you install in your lab uh, to this 
EU, the GMP Annex 11, or the more famous 21st CFR Part 11. And beside that, we also have some, some service about qualification support where we can assist you in the validation activities you have to do uh, to get your system to a qualified status. I think this overall shows um, some possibilities and we're really happy to learn about your requirements and happy to consult you. Now I would like to move on when looking at the, the time to our last topic uh, on our agenda to the Q&A session. And uh, therefore, we want to encourage you to, to integrate your questions into the um, question box. And we just turn on our webcams again. Eric is already here, now me as well. And uh, so let's have a look uh, what what is of your interest. Okay, Eric, there are quite a lot of questions. Maybe we have time for two or three to, to cover. Um, so the first of all is about glove testing. And here's the question, why to use an expensive optical extensometer and not a clip-on? Eric, can you help yeah. me on that? Okay, perhaps I, it was not clear enough, but I, I tried to explain it. Um, um, as I said, uh, there's a high danger um, to damage the samples if we have like a clip-on, um, like a contacting extensometer um, and um, it will be in very um, inhomogeneous testing because um, there is uh, some force um, um, acting from the clip-on to the sample and um, these will change the real measured um, value of the, the, the force itself. Um, there is a possibility, um, normally clip-ons, they have some um, sharp knives. Uh, this will totally not work with a glove. And for this, um, we are using, uh, could use perhaps um, um, grips, which have like an O-wing, um, 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 a rubber wing on top, so where the contacting will be very smooth. But here again, we are talking about forces between two and six newton, which we are measuring on the graph. And then perhaps um, the, 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 the travel force of such a clip force will perhaps add two newton. So this means this will totally uh, change the, the force itself. And therefore, if you do not want to have reliable results on elongation like ISO um, 37. I think there is no way around to use such a video um, based accentometer system. Okay, great. Um, there's another question. Um, what was the ASDM, ASDM number of the wound healing adhesive test? And um, I think I just showed that there is, uh, from my opinion, I showed the EN. 1939 and uh, so it's a European standard. Uh, so far I'm not aware of, of an ASDM standard that I can tell you right now. Um, so it's an EN1939 standard that refers to this metal plate. Um, another question which is, okay it's about the horizontal testing machine. Um, so what influence on load cell side forces and calibration? I hope, Eric, that you know what is meant about that and, and you can help. I can imagine. I think if somebody is looking on perhaps very cheap um, load cells, um, they are very sensitive on side loads. So this means you have to, perhaps you are more accurate if you have really an extra load for tensile and compression, but by sight, um, and this would be perhaps the topic if we have the horizontal and um, we have the hanging load of the, the grip systems, which have a weight if it's a pneumatic grip system. But good um, if you're looking at uh, load cells from Zwigro, we are a large manufacturer, so we're not buying them. We have our own production also for load cells, and we have very robust systems and um, they, they are very um, well um, secured against these side forces and therefore we have no problem um, 
to use these in a horizontal version? If this is the question, then this would be my answer. Okay, yeah, maybe if, uh, I hope we could answer your question. If not, uh, just feel free to contact us again or write down the, the uh, a more precise question. Maybe one last uh, question for, for today before we come to an end. Um, let's take that one. Um, how to test face shields? Uh, I think this, this, this guy re remembers the, our first introduction slide about the different types. And, and the face shields, uh, yes, we also see them. They are quite uh, often used right now, sometimes instead of masks, also they do not offer the, the same level of protection. So first of all, they have to, to, to withstand uh, droplets, a droplet and splashes, let's say. But from a mechanical testing perspective, I know that there is a test done uh, from this ISO 16900, yeah, 16900. Um, where we we have to it has to resist or withstand an, an impact by a by a defined steel ball. So you just uh, I think one meter thirty or something like that. You have to drop this uh, defined steel ball on this uh, on this visor on this face shield, and you have to to temper it. So one is minus five, and the other is about uh, thirty five degrees with some some tolerances that are allowed. So uh, there's also that test. Uh, which you can can use for that. So I hope that that we answered that question as well. Um, so now I would would like to come to an end. I want to thank you for all the questions. Uh, there are still some open ones. We will answer separately by, by mail, and uh, and just come to to my my or our last slide um, for today. So um, get in touch with us. I think that is exactly what what we would like to have that you. Talk to us, talk to your sales and service organizations, come back to us if you have questions or just uh, use the last chance to, to write down any question that we are able to answer. You can go to our twigroll.com, uh, to our webpage, to the YouTube channel, follow us on LinkedIn. So we're quite there and offer several platforms how you get uh, can get in contact with us. And at the end, I want to thank you, first of all, Eric, for supporting me in this webinar, for giving uh, showing us his expertise in that area. I want to thank you uh, for taking part in that webinar, for participating in the polls, for, for putting down, for noting the questions, for your interest. And uh, we're looking forward to meeting you again, maybe in one of our next webinars, uh, for which we show in the virtual testing forum, or also welcome you after that COVID-19 pandemic here again in Ulm. Thank you very much and bye. Thank you, bye.